Today's like the fourth Thursday I've had this week, which coincidentally makes it Friday. So there you go, it, that's the day of the week. And the existential question of the day, of the Friday, which is what it is, is if you drop soap on the floor, is the soap dirty or is the floor clean? Discuss. I'm sure somebody's gonna come in and be like, oh, it's only clean if you put water on it and you have to scrub it, scrub it. But while you discuss that, let's go ahead and discuss the future of GPU cooling. Ace Tech revealing their industry leading GPU cooling technology. And in case you're not familiar with Ace Tech before we get into the GPU stuff, they're the company behind most of the AIO pumps that you see in a lot of water cooling stuff. They hold many of the patents. A lot of the companies lease it out from them so that they can actually build it into their stuff. There's been lawsuits because they've used the technology without crediting Ace Tech and getting their permission on that kind of stuff. And you always see like weird wonky things and like pump combos because they're not using Ace Tech patent stuff. And then it's just a little weird because Ace Tech has all of the rights to the typical AIO design. Well, Ace Tech, this may not become typical, but I want it. This is the world's first slot and PCI Express radiator card. This is actually launching with an Alienware system, but they do expect that this is going to launch by itself at some point. Basically, you just have the cooler on the GPU and then there's a blower fan with the radiator and everything and the pump on the actual uh, PCI Express slot card and then you just put that into an extra slot and then it kind of fills out the gaps. Kind of makes it look like it's two graphics cards, but really, instead of having to worry about whether or not you're gonna have space for your rad and your pump and trying to figure out all of that, nope, just slot it in. It's actually super convenient. I really love this. Whether or not this is gonna see huge adoption, whether or not we're gonna see many companies adopting this to put this on their uh, graphics card liquid cooling things, we'll have to see. It definitely works for OEMs where there's not as much room for custom liquid cooling. In fact, there's hardly any room all of the time because they're using proprietary setups so that this is just like it slots into the motherboard you just need the expansion slots at the case which are just standard anyways there you go now you got a liquid cool gpu i love it i want more of it but speaking of ace attack msi is going to be launching their first cpu liquid coolers and they are not going to be using the ace attack design they actually are going to be putting the pump on the radiator so this is to dampen the sound of the overall assembly and reduce noise is what the press release says. However, pretty sure it's they don't wanna pay the patent money. So <laughs> MSI dropping a pretty sleek looking G CPU cooler. I like it. I don't know how much it's gonna cost. They didn't say that, but it looks dope. But you know what doesn't look dope? Intel. But you know what does look dope? DDR5. And that's what we're expected to get next year with Alder Lake. There's some rumors coming out of PTT, which I heard is more of like a gossip site and not actual news stuff. So the rumors take it with a huge grain of salt. But according to the PTT report, there's going to be three different kind of SKUs for Rocket Lake based on TDP, eight core parts with 95 watt TDP and eight, six core and four core parts in 80 watt TDPs and 65 watt TDPs. And then it's going to have power level ratings for up to 251 watts it's all just you can read the entire leak down below whether or not it'll pan out whether or not alder lake is real we'll have to wait and see well i'm on a bender of wanting in amd stuff it's, i'm drunk with love for amd and we got a leaked set of apus being decoded over on igor's lab showing that there may be as many as 12 new renoir apus coming out from amd however it might be six regular and then six ryzen pro and it might not actually be 12 that are coming out however the top of the line we've already talked about eight cores, 16 threads up to 4.3 gigahertz boost on the cpu plus an eight uh, compute unit Vega iGPU, which according to everything that we're hearing, AMD is not going to be putting a Vega 11 on the APU. It's just going to be Vega 8, but it's going to be the 7 nanometer Vega 8, which has a 50% IPC uplift. So it should be better than the third generation, or it should be better than the third no, this doesn't work because the third generation of Ryzen is the second generation of APUs because the APU started on the second generation. So the 3400G is not the third, it's the second. I don't like it. But you know what I do like? Hot chips. Just spicy. Ah, oh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Hot Chips the conference. They've confirmed that they're going to be having their live stream event in August. And in case you don't remember Hot Chips, this is actually where we first got the Turing leak from NVIDIA because it was announced that they were going to be detailing their Turing architecture at Hot Chips on August 21st, 2018. And that was before they even announced Turing. Well, Turing got announced August 20th, 2018. So a little spoiler there for you. Speaking of spoilers, 
What is going on with TSMC? We talked about it in hot news two days ago that TSMC gave in an interview to DigiTimes, we're not building a fabrication facility in the United States. That was basically the general sentiment of that interview. I'm adding color commentary there. Well, press release today, TSMC is building a $12 billion fabrication facility in Arizona. There you go. TSMC is doing it after they gave an article saying that they're not gonna do it. The company will have five nanometer technology there with the capacity to build 20,000 silicon wafers per month in their expected to create 1,600 high paying jobs. Got bamboozled. Yeah, I was about to say, they, they pulled the, the sneaky on you. And I got sneakied. But Apple's not being very sneaky about their plans for VR because they came out and said, yes, we did buy Next VR, which, yeah, we, we knew because there was a report that came out a month ago saying that you bought it for $100 million. We don't know what Apple's doing with it. However, John Prosser from Front Page Tech is indicating that it's probably gonna go into Apple glasses. And he's saying that they should be aimed for a March to June of 2021 release, which is gonna be augmented reality type stuff. So Apple glasses, is it gonna fail like Google Glass? Who knows, we'll have to see. But while Apple might be copying Google, Microsoft is copying Apple now because Apple got rid of 32-bit operating systems. It's gone. You have to have 64-bit. If you don't have 64-bit support on your app, you cannot run it on the latest Mac OS. Well, Microsoft is done giving PC makers Windows 10 32-bit. They're not killing 32-bit systems. However, they are going to require that OEMs use 64-bit builds and they're no longer gonna release 32-bit builds for OEM distribution. So 32-bit also leaving on Windows, but we'll probably have a longer legacy period of supporting 32-bit apps. But there ain't gonna be no legacy of the humans once the robots take over. And AI is just gonna be in everything. Sony announcing that they have a new image sensor, which is going into hopefully, probably smartphones, but it's gonna have a camera sensor with onboard AI, basically to do things like recognizing objects instead of sending that to a cloud to compute, having a local AI chip to process it. This makes sense that Sony would do it, but most smartphone manufacturers are already doing it in-house anyways, like the Apple SOCs have NPUs, Google has their pixel processing version, uh, even Huawei has their own AI chip on the phone to help with the camera, so Sony's just baking that in to the actual sensor. Kind of cool. You know what's not cool though? Food, after you microwave it. And MIT wants to find out how much do you microwave, huh? What are your microwaving habits? Spill your beans, not in the microwave, out of your mouth, give them the words. So apparently researchers from MIT's C-Cell laboratory have created a wireless system that monitors how people are using their appliances to figure out their health, health habits, their well-being, and encourage less energy uses and even help insurance companies assess risk. The system's called SAPL and they can sap right off. I'm not giving them any of that information. I actually don't use the microwave that often. I can't remember the last time I used the microwave. It's either I'm baking something that's frozen or I'm eating it cold. Spaghetti, you best believe I'm eating that out of a bag cold. Pizza, cold. Why do I need to heat it up? Spag bag. Spag bag. In case you're not familiar with what the spag bag is, come join us on Hot News Live, you'll understand twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. In case you're not familiar with images, maybe you've never opened your eyelids. Well, Microsoft and Intel are working together to convert malware into images, which is kind of cool. They're taking the binary, converting it into images, and then using neural networks to determine how crazy and vulnerable and bad the malware might be. The program's called Stamina for Static Malware as Image Network Analysis. Thanks for that acronym. I need that today. And thanks, Asus, for your ROG Strix Helios White Edition chassis. They unveiled it. I actually don't like it, because it's not white. Oh dear. It bothers me. So it has that giant black uh, tempered glass in the middle with some RGB. The outside is aluminum brush metal, and then the inside is white with black. This is not a white edition. This isn't even like a Stormtrooper edition. The fact that they added in aluminum changes everything. It's a weird, Weird thing. This is just like them saying they gave us a white motherboard, but then it's just white plastic on a black PCB. Doesn't count! Doesn't count! You know what doesn't count? Me, and how many times I've used a bag Segway to talk about Steam and their Play Next game recommendation feature, which should now be available as an experimental feature on Steam Labs. It'll allow you to get recommendations of what games you wanna play next using machine learning algorithms. Why this hasn't been a thing? Why has Netflix had this for so long? Why has a company as big as Valve with 
it, like as much market share as Steam has, not been able to properly recommend people games to play next based on what you've already played and what you enjoy. Who the heck knows, but now it's available. And what's also available is Epic Games Mega Sale 2020. It's now going on. Obviously, they kicked it off with crashing their servers due to making GTA 5 free yesterday. It's back up now. However, there's quite a few good sales going on right now. Control is 50% off. Red Dead Redemption 2, 20% off. Borderlands 3, 50% off. Witch three $15 for the game of the year edition it's not bad not bad Assassin's Creed Odyssey 67% off they were so close to glory there but you know what does look like it might be glorious goes to Shushima we got a gameplay trailer yesterday actual gameplay including the fact that it will have a black and white cinema mode to pay homage to a lot of the films that they pulled from in order to make Ghost of Tsushima so in case you're into samurais and feudal Japan this might be the game for you check out the gameplay trailer at the link in the video description and while you're also down there click on the link in the video description to find out which games GeForce now has added to their library I, the only one I recognize is Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony because I had that on my PS Vita but other than that like Surgeon Simulator is there too so you can check the list down below it's none of my concern and what's none of my concern is Paper Mario the Origami King is coming out July 17th on the Nintendo Switch I don't care I probably won't get it I probably won't even play it so it's kind of boring to me you know what else is boring though tunnels the Boring Company just finished its second tunnel in Las Vegas, trying to make sure they got a loop transit system. It's supposed to open January 2021, take you from the airport to the Las Vegas Convention Center, just go on a Tesla. That's the general idea. It's not quite that what they were promising with like the Hyperloop speed system. It's just a Tesla on a rail, and then you don't have to do traffic. You just go around you round. It's like a merry-go-round underground. And what was underground, but now is above ground, is HDMI 2.1 support. Because it's been a standard for a while, but it wasn't baked into graphics cards, it wasn't baked into monitors. Well, apparently the world's first gaming monitor to get HDMI 2.1 will be the EVE Spectrum monitors. At least if they can actually release them on time. EVE Spectrum monitors are supposed to be 1440p, 240Hz, 4K, 144Hz, supposed to be something pretty good. Those are going to have HDMI 2.1. It's 1440p, 144Hz monitor will just stick with regular or HDMI 2.0B, but they're saying that they will implement HDMI 2.1 into these monitors. However, they're also going to have pandemic-related delays with the lesser version, the 1440p, 144Hz, being delayed until Q1 2021, whereas the higher-end ones will ship in Q4. We'll see if they can make that happen. But you know what Google's making happen? They're, they're making sure that ads aren't going to take up all of your resources. They have announced that they're going to start limiting CPU and data usage of ads and will remove heavy ads. This is including crypto ads that would typically crypto jack you, but they got rid of that. But these ads, such as those that mine cryptocurrency, are poorly programmed or are unoptimized for network usage, can drain battery life, saturate already strained networks, and cost money. So they're just yeeting them right out the window, which is what I'm doing with this episode of Hot News and my laptop. Don't forget to yeet me your answer to today's existential question of the day, which is soap falling on the floor. Soap dirty, floor clean. Let me know what's your answer. And my answer to doing hot news is no, I'm done. I'm not a circus monkey. I'm not staying here. You can't make me. Turn off the video, Reese. Nope. <laughs> That hurts.